fuselage skin on the whirlwind due to the full monocoque construction is the main structural member joining the upper and lower longer arms and bulkheads. The half frames and intercostals providing contour and stiffness but no stress continuity to the structure. The aerodynamic form presents a number of complex compound surfaces to be produced ranging from a tapering semicircular form forward transitioning into an almost square form with a one and a half degree negative slope at the midsection and then into a tapering ogival at the frame 10 transport joint. Unlike semi-skinned aircraft, Spitfire, Typhoon etc, the whirlwind skin is very thick. The whirlwind skin being 16 standard wire gauge throughout against the more usual 24-22 standard wire gauge used on contemporary aircraft. The upper longer on to skin connection is also a very complex form. The tubular longer on sits inside a top combing that carries the canopy roller tracks. The fish plates that connect the half frames on the inside of the fuselage attach to the top combing giving six layers to be riveted together. The thick walls of the tubular longer on are also drilled to accommodate tubular distance pieces. These distance pieces are essential to prevent the rivets buckling under the compressive loads when riveting. Over 3,500 rivet holes being match drilled to the supporting structure, deburred, then countersunk. The upper longer on connection to the lower longer on via the longer on extensions utilise countersink bolts and nuts for their fitting. A combination of pneumatic rivet guns, hydraulic and hand rivet squeezers being employed to fix the skins along with a range of specialised booking bars required for access to form the rivets. The skins were green fitted to the airframe structure with a mixture of clecos and skin pins. The whole structure then being stripped back to its skeletal form for painting. A two coat two pack aircraft etch primer being applied to all surfaces. An overcoat of the best matched green from original components was then applied. The final top coat camouflage will be applied when the rear fuselage and nose fairing are fitted next year. Once the skins were riveted in place, a sealing coat of the whirlwind green was applied to the outer surfaces. The instrument panels and diaphragm bulkhead being masked off and a matte black finish applied as original from the cockpit black and white images the Whirlwind Fighter project has in its possession. We are sure this is correct as our original blind flying panel is matte black and not dark grey. The reassembly of the cockpit section was a very time consuming process even though all components had previously been green fitted. Now the skins had been fitted, access to the rear of the instruments was extremely restricted. For long term survivability it was decided that high corrosive resistant 316 stainless steel fixings would be employed against the plated ANC nuts and bolts as found in flyable aircraft, thus removing the potential rusting and dissimilar metal corrosion problem. The cockpit section and armament have been transported to the Kent Battle of Britain Museum and installed in position with the Peregrine engines. A number of crash recovered airframe structures has been loaned by Steve Vizard from airframe assemblies and are currently undergoing cleaning and preservation and will be displayed alongside P7056. 
please keep an eye open for the next update later this year on the manufacture and assembly of the rear fuselage. The Whirlwind Fighter Project is a not-for-profit charity run by a group of volunteers dedicated to reproducing this iconic World War II fighter. If you feel you could assist the project, please visit the Whirlwind Fighter Project Facebook and web pages. Donations can be made through the Whirlwind Fighter Project's GoFundMe page. Also, please visit our active partner in the project and home of the Whirlwind Fighter Aircraft and Associated Artefacts, the Kent Battle of Britain Museum at Hawkinge. Please subscribe to the updates and many thanks for watching.